Welcome to the Public Housing Repositioning Post-Closing How-To Video Series. The goals of the video series are to explain and discuss common issues and activities that occur post-repositioning and to help PHAs understand their asset management and reporting responsibilities in the project-based voucher, PBV for short, program following a RAD conversion. Each video within the series provides quick guidance, approximately 10 minutes, and this specific video outlines key post-closing responsibilities that all PHAs must complete after closing a RAD conversion. The requirements include submitting the three-day docs to the RAD closing coordinator, submitting of the final closing docket online, submitting the form 50058 end of participation documents, processing earned income verification, and dealing with tenant debts. Understanding use of capital funds and operation reserves post-closing and filling out the RAD completion certification. Three-day documents. We will start with the first requirement that you will have to complete, submission of the three-day documents to your RAD closing coordinator. Named after their due date, these are a set of documents that are due three days following the closing date as evidence that the transaction has officially closed. These documents include six items. They are the recorded release of Declaration of Trust or Declaration of Restrictive Covenants, the recorded RAD use agreement or agreements, fully executed RAD, PBV, HAP contract or contracts. Please note, for RAD Section 18 blends, include the fully executed non-RAD PBV HAPs and or AHAPs. Fully executed RCC amendment. Recorded post-closing RAD Restrictive Covenants. Any other documents requested in the RAD escrow instructions letter. PDFs of the fully recorded documents should simply be emailed directly to your RAD closing coordinator. This person is also your point of contact for any questions you have during the process. Online submission of final closing docket. After you have emailed your three-day closing documents, you should get started on submitting the final closing docket no later than 30 days after recording. However, unlike the three-day documents, the closing docket will be uploaded to the RAD Resource Desk. Check with the HUD OGC Field Council on preference for receiving documents. You will have worked on this throughout the closing process with your assigned RAD Closing Coordinator, who will also continue to be your primary point of contact. To determine which party is responsible for the submittal, take a look at the Consolidated Owner Certification. For more detailed instructions, check out the guide in the RAD Resource Desk Document Library. Form 50058 End of Participation Submission Another key element that is required post-closing is the submission of the 50058 End of Participation Form, or EOP for short. This is required for all properties to be removed from the IMS PIC system. It is also the step that formally transitions families receiving assistance off of the public housing program. A 50058 form must be submitted for each resident at the converting project before the last day of the month, but prior to the first day the RAD HAP contract is effective. This form must be effective before the last day of the month. There are two ways that PHAs typically submit EOPs. First, you can upload completed EOPs created using the Family Reporting Software, FRS for short, or other PHA business software directly to PIC, or you can create and submit directly within the PIC system. The more complete instructions for completing the 50058 End of Participation EOP can be found in the RAD Resource Desk Document Library. Lease Terminations There are two main things to remember about lease terminations. First, all public housing residents should have leases terminated the last day of the month prior to the HAP effective date. For example, if the HAP effective date is June 1st, resident leases should be terminated on May 31st. Secondly, the Section 8 compliant lease date should mirror the HAP effective date. So in this example, the lease would begin on June 1st, the same day the HAP contract begins. Earned Income Verification and Tenant Debts 
It is important to note that tenant debts should not be recorded in the EIV system after the 50058 EOPs have been submitted. EIV can continue to be used for other applicable circumstances, just not for the entering of tenant debts. Use of Capital Funds of Operating Reserves Development Budget Now that the property has converted to Section 8 assistance, the PHA is strictly prohibited from using public housing funds to support the property. All capital funds or operating reserves that were approved in the financing plan must be identified in the Sources and Uses Exhibit to the RAD Conversion Commitment document. HUD will transfer capital funds in locks for drawdown. If there are any public housing funds that will either be held by the PHA or not immediately dispersed at closing, they should be moved to a separate bank account covered by the General Depository Agreement. There is a guidance document on this in the closing section of the RAD Resource Desk Document Library. We also want to emphasize here that no additional public housing funds may be added to the deal following closing. One big question that a lot of PHAs have is, what will my funding look like in the initial year of closing? The most important thing to remember is when you draw down public housing funds at closing or disperse them to the RAD property, HUD now considers the funds to be Section 8 funds, so they must be kept separate. This can include any public housing, capital or operating funds that were approved in the financing plan and identified in the RAD conversion commitment document. In order to get there, at closing, a PHA and new project owner must execute the initial year funding tool, which provides the amount of capital funds and operating reserves available to fund the project for the remaining months of the year. PHAs will begin receiving the Section 8 subsidy and PBV admin fee at the start of the calendar year following conversion. The RAD Scope of Work, or SOW, is included in the RAD Conversion Commitment and contains the full list of repairs to be completed following closing. Work should begin as soon as possible after closing. As the owner should have updated bids that outline costs prior to closing, HUD will not generally accept any reduction to the SO, and any overages are the responsibility of the owner. We want to emphasize here that public housing funds cannot be used after closing if they are not indicated in the Sources and Uses document. Recognizing that things come up and delays happen, consider delays and their impacts on relocation and URA requirements. Remember to be open and communicative with the post-closing team at the Office of Recapitalization. They are there to help with either post-conversion TA or answering simple questions via email. RAD Completion Certification Next up is the RAD Completion Certification, which must be completed electronically following closing for all transactions, even if you did not do any rehab. The RAD Resource Desk will automatically select the appropriate completion certification type for your transaction based on the information provided in the sources and uses. The two options are based on whether or not the PHA will do rehab post-closing or not. The certification includes the following information. Confirmation that the full scope of work was completed, the date it was completed, the final amount spent, and that it is a rehab and or new construction. Certification that the initial deposit to the replacement reserve was made at closing. Confirmation that the relocation or right to return procedures were followed. And lastly, Section 3 reporting information. If you are closing with no repairs after closing, the electronic certification is due 10 days following the effective date of the HAP contract. If you are doing repairs post-closing, the electronic certification is due 45 days after the completion of repairs. This is based on the work completion date in your RCC. Again, keep the post-closing team at the Office of Recapitalization in the loop if there are any delays. They will work with you to resolve any issues. Post-Closing Resources We have referenced several available resources throughout this video. Here we aggregate all the resources we think will be helpful to you as you think about navigating life post-closing. RAD Instructions for Final Docket Submission After Closing Instructions for Completing the 5005A End of Participation General Depository Agreement, or GDA, Guidance Rental Assistance Demonstration 
Guide to Completing and Submitting the Completion Certification to HUD. RAD PBV Quick Reference Guide. Post Conversion Processing Guide. This is what the main page of the RAD Resource Desk will look like. All you have to do is click on the document library and you will have easy access to all these documents and more. Additional post-closing assistance. As mentioned earlier, the Office of Recapitalization also offers post-closing technical assistance upon request. The post-closing conversion guide on the RAD Resource Desk can be particularly helpful in outlining common questions and who you should contact for assistance. A few of the items highlighted there include Delayed conversion agreements HAP contract changes and adjustments Changes pertaining to the RAD scope of work Funding and subsidy-related questions or issues New financing unrelated to the RAD scope of work Ownership changes, sales, transfers of assistance, releases If you have further questions and are not sure who to contact, email the resource desk at resourcedesk at radresource.net. We also encourage you to check out the other videos in this series for even more helpful post-closing information.